Well, my dad's calling, we're talking. He's like, you're gonna be okay, Hayden. I'm like, yeah, I'll be fine. It's like 150. And I felt something pushing down on me. I could see the TV floating in the air. I knew we were spinning. I could see the lights. Something was keeping me in that seat. The state trooper has to come talk to us. He's like, guys, I know this is really hard. I'm so sorry. I just need to know how many casualties there are. He's like, never in my life have I seen something that bad where no one died. If I've ever seen a miracle in all of my time, this would be one. You heard of the dream team? As I'm still team. gonna drink this. Well, we're the cares. mean team. The mean team. <laughs> we good? Yeah, we're ready to roll. Okay, dude. So I have one more thing to say about the spirit. Uh, about, oh, about the float spirit. tank. Yeah, the, uh, the float tank. Because I'd mentioned in like the conscious mind, um, the unconscious mind. Mm -hmm. But then I also think a another area that that is important that I mentioned is the spirit this consciousness, right? Our spirit. And what I would say is, do you believe or do you feel like there's also spirit noise going on? Meaning what? Meaning like, are there spirits close? Um, are there other spirits around? Is there the spirit of God, the Holy Ghost? Like, hmm. there has to be other noise going <clears throat> on, right? Um, Interesting. And, and the way I would say this is, I work on a lot of like, scripture-based movies or scripture-based sure. things, right? And what I've found is, is not only in doing that, but in my own life, what I've found that is, is that I feel that the spirit world, meaning angels, meaning people who have even died in our lives, yeah. are so much closer than I would have ever realized. Huh. And I've been wanting to share this story for a while now. So I have two experiences that I felt like were very close. I don't know if I would say near death, but very near death. After my dad died, I remember um, as a teen, I went through this phase where, where, where for some reason I didn't want to wear my seatbelt. Okay. Like I always felt like I'm too cool for a seatbelt, right? Okay. And uh, I remember very vividly for, for a week straight, maybe longer, but as I was driving by uh, my dad's gravesite, I, I, I felt like I would hear this noise which was which was ended up being this feeling to put on my seatbelt interesting and i'm like that's a weird thing but i'm going to listen to that and follow that okay and i and, and it, it was such an ingrained habit of not wearing my seatbelt that i would remember driving by and be like oh, i gotta put on my seatbelt and it wasn't but a, a week or two weeks later after this that i was in a major car accident really and the only reason i lived was because i had a seatbelt on dang dude okay? that one was many many years ago but uh, I have a more recent one as well, where um, the whole reason me and my wife moved to Utah was uh, because my mother-in-law got ovarian cancer. Okay. And she decided she, she, she'd bought it in a house and they were going to move to Springville, Utah. And uh, just before, about six months before that, she'd found out she had cancer. Mm. And my wife, um, who works in the medical field and who who's a go-getter, man, like she's amazing at her job. She... Uh, I had spoken to her mom and her mom was like, hey, I, I went to the University of Washington, which is the number one cancer center in the world. And they really didn't seem interested in helping her. Really? They were kind of like, yeah, it's too late. Like you got a couple months to live. Like Dang. get your affairs in order. Dang, dude. And my wife uh, amazingly was like, you know what? I'm going to do a little more research and see. And I'm not going to stop there. Okay. I'm going to see what other options there are. And the Huntsman in Salt Lake. Yeah. Um. She'd got a hold of them and they'd agreed that uh, they would see her. Okay. So my wife set all this up. Long story short, um, we'd all met in Utah for Christmas and my wife took took uh, my mother-in-law to the hospital, okay. to, to the huntsman. Huntsman was like, "We this is totally curable. Like we totally can help her. As a matter of fact, like if she, we can admit her now and have surgery in like 10 days. Wow. To try to get rid of this. Like we believe, we give her like a solid chance. Dang, bro. And we went home and we told her that if she did it, we would move here and buy a house online. Like done deal. Cool. Consider it done. Move into our basement. Done deal. Sure. So we went home and a couple of times we came out and anyhow, we found a house. We got a house. 
she had the surgery. Of course, she had to do a long little bit of rehab before she even moved in with us. Yeah. Came in with, came, moved in with us, and the, the surgery was very successful. She did end up dying after a reoccurrence, but it really gave her a, a significant amount of time more than what she would That's have good. had. Um, and, and I bring that up because um, immediately after she died, we had this really spiritual experience where... So, you know, I have twins and at this time, I think they might have been between two or three years old. Okay. okay. And normally we, you've been to my house in my basement. No, in this time, my <clears throat> wife was really, she was working and then she would take, try to take care of her mom. And then of course she tried to be a wife and she's trying to be a, a mother. So she, her plate was really full. Sure. And, um, I, I was trying to, trying to do my share as well, which was nothing compared to her share. She always does more than me. <laughs> um, <laughs> But uh, I was doing my share and one day um, I got into a habit of like once a day I would leave my kids downstairs and I would go upstairs and take care, take care of my stuff, whether it was just eating in general or like cleaning up or doing so. I'd leave the kids downstairs and for, you know, 45 minutes they'd watch a show or they would play on their own. Mm. And I had this pretty, pretty nice routine set up. Well, because my mother-in-law had died, um we had had more people come into town. My wife's sister had come into town and her, and her husband. Right. Okay. And, uh, we were all, the, my, my mother-in-law had died and we were all upstairs and it was that time in the day where I let the kids kind of do their own thing downstairs. Okay. okay. So we were all came up and for some reason, I remember so vividly that for some reason we had put on frozen cause we'd wanted a little extra time. The movie frozen, sure. right? Kids love that movie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And for some reason, my brother-in-law was down there with me as I was setting it up. And he was like, um, oh, they're putting on Frozen. We've seen this with all the all the, kid, all the nieces and nephews, right? But uh, he was like, for some reason, I'm going to stay down here. And I was like, okay, interesting. Hmm. Uh, no problem. We'll come up when you're ready. Um, I basically set this up so we can all chat and try to move forward with uh, what we got going here, right? Right. Went upstairs and... Uh, my brother-in-law comes running upstairs and he's like, come down here quick. And I come down Yo, and he's holding my son. And I wasn't really worried because I hadn't heard any bangs or noises. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I, I, I was in tune, right? Like my subconsciousness was, might have been, my consciousness might have been upstairs, but my subconsciousness was downstairs, <laughs> sure. right? I'm, I'm tuned in. I'm listening. I don't hear any noises. I don't hear any craziness. That why, would I, why would I be alarmed I didn't hear a bang? Right. Does that make sense? You totally, yeah. So when I got down there, he was holding my son and he looks at me and he said, uh, he was climbing and he got the blinds on him, on his neck. And, and I'm still not very concerned, right? I'm like, oh, he'll be okay. Let me have him. And he's, at, he's acting very erratic, meaning he's very kind of panicked. He's acting nervous. He's not breathing right. Hmm. So my instinct is I got to take him into, into his room away from the noise and I got to talk to him and find out what's going on. So he was climbing and he, as he was climbing, the blinds like caught onto his neck from the window. That's the story sort of that That's I have he, at the moment, have, okay. right? I don't know the exact story. The truth is I wasn't concerned about the story. Got it. I was more concerned about how... I'm just such a mental person. I'm so concerned about how he's mentally handling sure, this scenario sure, sure. and how can I set his mind up for success for the future, right? Yeah, I'm yeah. not even thinking like this is a life and death scenario. Right. I'm thinking, let's calm him down. Like this but is an overreaction. This is an overreaction. I can help him settle down. Okay. And as I help him settle down, he does do breathing with me. He does settle down. He does follow my breath. He does stay close to me. And I start to look at his neck and I notice he's got these huge, really like burn type mark around his neck. Right. Okay. We settle down and I go talk to my brother and he's like, Rich, your son, he climbs up on the window and he's jumping off to this couch, jumping off to the couch. And uh, we have these blinds and I've always wanted to share this, but I've never had the, the way that I've wanted to share this. We have the blinds that like they have a string so you can pull the blind up. Yeah. And those blinds, you've been to my house, you know, we don't have them up anymore. Those blinds, I've always saw that string and I've always thought, let's tuck that string behind. And we've always done that hmm. so that it never hangs down so that there's never an instinct to grab it or put it around you or put it around your wrist. He said that string was hanging down. 
and it was all tangled, right? Those strings get tangled. And he put his neck in it and he jumped off to the couch and he didn't know that he just hung himself. So the blinds were around his, the, the string was around his neck. He jumped and it yanked him back and he fell straight down. And he said it was so tight on his neck that immediately he went limp. Really? And he said, he, in, in, it must have been five seconds, but he said it felt like a lifetime of him getting up off the couch, running to my son and taking him off of this thing. Right. Where wow. he was already almost completely unconscious. How old was he again? Your son? He, I think he was three. Okay. Three or four. Maybe. Jeez, dude. And that my daughter, it was so quiet that my daughter was just watching the TV. She didn't even know. She didn't even know. So if he hadn't been down there and my mother-in-law hadn't died, he wouldn't have been down there. Mm. To us, it feels like he would have died. Hmm. and I, there wouldn't have been a noise sure i would, would have, have never dude. heard anything yeah so when i would have went downstairs i would have saw my son hanging dang dude so to me what i'm getting at is how close is that spiritual realm and how in tune with it are we and how much bandwidth of our brain does it take hmm. because you know when you've seen death yeah that it's there man. it's real it's real and sometimes we're just not in tune with it but just like our subconsciousness, just because we're not in tune with it in that moment doesn't mean it's not there. Yeah. It just means we've learned to ignore it or we learned to put it in the back of our yeah, mind. Yeah, or we're so we're either so distracted by things in the physical world, or another thing that I've thought about a lot is like the things in our the things that we've learned to desire in the physical world are so misaligned to what our spirit is craves that it's desensitized its ability to like connect with um, absolutely um, spiritual things. It's pretty undeniable that like there's a spiritual realm. I mean, you talk to people even that take like DMT or ayahuasca or like hallucinogens and it's like, you can't make that stuff up, dude. Something you happens. Can't. I mean, I've known of people who have, um, I've never taken hallucinogens myself, although I think that would probably be my temptation if I wasn't of the faith that I yeah, am. For absolutely. sure it would be. Yeah, we'd, all, we'd be all in for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I definitely know of people having experiences of like talking to their dead ancestors and having conversations that they, you can't make up or like your brain's not tricking you. It's like there's something actually going on there, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I don't know. My thought's always been like, so when I was a kid, I, I'll never forget this experience, right? When I was a kid, we were driving. We always drove everywhere, like even long trips. We would drive everywhere because we just couldn't afford to take a plane. And yeah. my dad, we would always drive this big, either suburban or later. My parents got like a used, used hand-me-down like Denali that they would drive. <laughs> my mom actually had just got in a car accident and she's okay, but she just got in a car accident with this thing. And finally, he's getting a new car. I mean, no way. but all growing up, we would just pack into the Denali <laughs> and we would drive. And typically what we would do is we would drive like really late at night so that my dad could have some peace and quiet because everyone would be up and we were so crammed <laughs> together. It was the only way to, if we, the only to way to it. get us to like bear the 12, 14 hour drives was if we were just so crammed together that, uh, because we were so crammed together, if it was a long night and be... we'd have to go to sleep. Right. Yeah. So oftentimes I would sit in the front seat because um, I was just quite a bit bigger than my brothers. Oh, yeah. And quite a bit bigger than my mom even later on yeah. when I was a teenager. And hmm. I wouldn't ever go to sleep, though. I've always been kind of a night owl. Yeah, me too. Because, yeah, I mean, you know this about me. I've been at your house and it's like two in the morning. I'm like, bro, we probably should go to sleep. Yeah. I've always been kind of a night owl. And I, one of the reasons why is because I just feel really connected to spiritual things at night. And I'll, I'll never forget this first time um, when I was uh, I was a kid. I was probably, it was after, right, almost right after um, Matt died. And I was, uh, and then, you know, six months later, my brother passed away. And so probably maybe within six or seven months from that. And I'm just like, my head's not even on this yeah. planet, right? Like yeah. no <laughs> I'm way. doing things on How this planet do, that are yeah. to numb the pain that <laughs> yeah. are bad, but my head's not, I'm not <laughs> right, even here. Right. So I remember we're driving and I'm trying, I'm kind of thinking about like all the stupid things that I was doing to like numb all the pain out. And I remember looking out the window and just looking up at the stars. We're, we're kind of going between Moab and like price uh, area. Mm -hmm. um, 
and the, so there's like pretty dark out there. and it, there's no light from <laughs> yeah. town it's a long stretch i just remember looking out um looking out the window as my dad is he has his headphones in and he's eating sunflower seeds i'll never forget like even the smell of like yeah the, and the feeling the the sound and i'm looking out the window and i'm just thinking to myself like i wonder why i don't ever get like because i had heard about people seeing like visions of like their ancestors and stuff yeah I'm like i wonder why that never happens to me like why can't i feel stuff on the other side right now like what's going on there and i just remember imagining and just kind of craving like i wish i could like talk to i wish i could talk to people that like went before me to like ask them questions and like where where is my brother where's matt like why can't i talk to them and I just remember thinking to myself that having this craving of like, I'd really like to like be able to communicate somehow and just see if like what's on the other side is real. If there is, if it is right. Yeah. And just having this really distinct impression that like it's all of that stuff is invisible. If your life is not aligned with like truth. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Just having this really vivid impression that like it's there. Something is there but it will be invisible to you if you do if you do not align your life with like truth and like stop messing around with all the other stuff that you're doing right now to try to numb this pain away or drowning it out yeah or even noise. now and now, now i'm realizing that too it's like i mean these guys literally run my run my in instagram and stuff for me because i can't stand to be on that <laughs> crap dude just because it's so distracting there's just so much noise mm -hmm. and then when i see it it's almost just like silly to me when i watch people doing stuff i'm like <laughs> What on earth simulation is this, bro? <laughs> you know, right. it's crazy. It's wild. Mm -hmm. But that all, I will never forget that experience. And then when we got home back from that trip, my dad was working on the car and I remember going up to him. Oh, dude, this is another one I'll never forget. I could smell the grass that was wet to my like left. Yeah, and like no I see way. him, I'm like, dad, have you ever had a vision of like, have you ever, has Matt ever come and visited you before? Have you ever had a vision of, and, <laughs> and he was like, you know, I can't say that I ever have. And I'm like, I wonder why, like, I don't get those. I just like, yeah, that's just kind of a weird thought. I mean, wow. I've, I've never uh, actually had a vision in that way, but there's something the, to the, when I really start trying to like get honest with myself and like be a little better and live a little more like, let's call it righteous or spiritual, spiritually in tune or in tune with like who I root my identity, who I really am, like as a son of God. That's when that that other side gets real, real close. I can feel it almost, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I can feel like those whisperings actually, and I don't mean it in sound even, um, but just like those thoughts that usually I wouldn't ever have. That yeah. clarity of mind, like that, it's, dude, that it, connection, I, dude. It's real. Mm -hmm. It's real. And the more, the better we get at eliminating the noise of our own bodies or of our own mind or of our, of all the noise that's around us. Mm -hmm. Like, I think the better off we are. Yeah. You know? And I think that's why me personally, that's why I've always loved the night is I know that there's less traffic, <laughs> you know, I know that there's less light. Mm. Um, and I just love the dark because I can hear myself think, dang dude, I love the night, you know? <laughs> i love that like so much oh that's amazing um dude wow i sarah is uh she's a dreamer she used to have really vivid dreams well she still does she still has a ton of vivid dreams but like pretty significant ones like stuff so ones that you could really easily derive some meaning from like mm -hmm. not coincidental dreams man there was a time when we were when we were dating um where she used to have dreams about me all the time. Like when I was, when we were really good friends before we started like dating, dating. And she would tell me about these dreams. She's like, I had a dream about you last night. It wasn't anything weird of like, oh, I was dreaming like about you. <laughs> oh, right, like, right. Like romantic or anything. <laughs> she would just tell me and she'd be like, I had a dream about you last night. And she's like, it's weird because um, normally when you're in my dreams, you're wearing like this white shirt. Hmm. She's like, but the last couple of dreams I've had, like last couple of nights, you've been wearing a black shirt. And she didn't know this, but like I hadn't been doing some great things over the last like a few days. No way. Yeah. I'd fallen into some, some, some decently bad vices, like 
plural that yeah. um, kind of plagued me like before I was a missionary. No way. And yeah, interesting. And she'd always tell me that I would be like, and so I would just ask her like, what color shirt was I wearing? No, <laughs> you want to know your jacket and see where you are. Did you ever tell her that? Uh, yeah, yeah. Wow, we've always been pretty super, super open about like that stuff. How cool is that? Wild, right? Man, that's a sense right there. She, but she had no idea, and she's just saying, "Oh, I had a dream." She like wasn't connecting it with anything like spiritual or anything like that. Yeah, but how many times do we do that? And then there, it, it, it's all spiritual. Uh, yeah, every bit of it. You know what I mean? <laughs> like. It's got to be. It's got to be. It's there. I think every um, almost anybody you talk to, if you if you give them the chance to to say their spiritual experience, people people have them, mm. um, and they're just a part of us, right? Mm. You know, like I I would say with my mother in law, that was a, a I I think anytime death death happens, it's hard. And like I talked about John the Baptist before, I I couldn't yeah. fathom why he would have to move on, and and anytime somebody dies. I think everybody asks why now, like, why did they have to die now? Right. Why this moment? Why, why today? Mm -hmm. Um, and I felt like, of course, even with my mother-in-law, we thought, why now? Like, why today? Yeah. And I could a hundred percent say that I have no doubt in my mind why it was that day at that time and why so it was your at son that time. Didn't go. Yeah. Huh? Dang dude. You know, I can't tell one more story. We got like 15 <laughs> minutes, but like, um, I had, a. Um, it's interesting that that experience happened. You know, I was talking about looking out at the stars and like wondering mm -hmm. what was going on. So when I was uh, 16, I was driving um, my brother and my best friend. Uh, we were, for some reason, decided it was a good idea to drive from Albuquerque up to West Yellowstone, Montana for a <laughs> wedding, for my cousin's Jeez. wedding, right? <laughs> so we, we left super late. Like, I mean, I'm like... <laughs> As you know, I mean, one of my issues that I'd really like to fix is that I'm just late to stuff. Yeah. I like, and I've accepted this about me and I'm not, I used to beat myself up all the time. I'm like, listen, I just need to get better at not packing so much into my day that I'm just not late to stuff. So we leave really late, right? My dad's mm -hmm. calling me. He's like, dude, you guys are on the road yet? What's going on? He's like, you guys should really consider waiting. And I'm like, dad, but well, we're not going to make it in time if we wait. So we end up leaving at like six o'clock, right? By the time we get up to price, well, it's around that time, six, seven. By the time we get past Moab, it's like one in the morning. Oh, so we're driving through the night. We're planning to stop in, in Bountiful and then continue up the next day. That's wow. a long That's drive. That's a long stretch. <laughs> yeah. So we take turns. All three of us are taking turns. And the rule is like, guys, we have to stay awake so that the driver is safe. Yeah. So the, the driver keeps us all safe. <laughs> so that we stay alive. <laughs> yes. Um, and my parents, we never had like TVs on the, on the headrest or anything. Uh -huh. Like just like, we didn't ever have a nice enough car to have that built in. Mm -hmm. And so we would carry this mat, this like heavy, massive, like no car TV that you could put video cassettes no way. in. There's no way. <laughs> yeah, dude. No way. This thing is like ancient. Is I'm like incredible. not even that old, this but this incredible. thing is like, and I was, and dude, I, like I would love this thing because yeah. I, I would just pretend that we had a nice enough car to wear this thing was like built into the console right but did. in reality it's like 12 years old or did, 20 right. years old so uh so we would we, we brought that with us and we're like oh, oh we'll like watch some movies on the way up or something yeah so we're watching like these movies and anyway around one o'clock it's my turn to drive again okay and i noticed myself getting tired but i'm like guys you gotta stay up with me like please yeah. stay up with me right <laughs> so we get onto this stretch of road that is going through from Moab to Price where there's just no, it's the same. I'm literally describing the same stretch of road where I had that experience where like that craving, right? No way. And this is, I had that crave after my, remember after my, uh, who might as well have been my older brother and my other brother passed away. Yeah. So we're driving and, um, they, my, my brother and my friend fall asleep. It's passed out. Neither have seatbelts on. Okay. And I'm trying to go pretty fast so that I can, we can just get there because it's a long drive and I'm like sick of this. And I also know that I've driven that part enough to where I, I had driven it a couple of times with my dad, but we'd also just driven it so many times that police usually are not on that part of the road, right. like hardly ever. Mm -hmm. And it's also so late that there wouldn't have been typically. So my dad's calling, we're talking and I'm like, he's like, you're going to be okay. Hey, and I'm like, yeah, I'll be fine. Okay. <laughs> I hang up and it's like 150. 
and all of a sudden next thing i know uh like my eye doze off my eyes are closed um there were no bumper strips on the side of the road to wake you up so there's just this like the road ends here right and there's a tiny strip of dirt and then it's a drop off all the way down it's like 40 or 50 feet down just like steep not like a cliff but like steep right. so this just goes down out into the abyss yeah. like nowhere right um so what wakes me up is the sound of the gravel just like and i'm like oh crap like uh, i gotta like correct but i'm not that far off are actually. you nervous or are you like no i wasn't nervous calm. at all super calm so i'm like oh i gotta correct i'm like i i just like doze off for a second like we're fine because i can literally see we're going straight and like i'm not that far <laughs> no off the way. i'm not that far off the line right yeah so i try to correct like gradually and the lip of the asphalt is so big that it's not going back onto the road. Oh, no way. So I try to correct again gradually and you can hear the tire against no that, that asphalt. Way. It's like this, right? Yeah, it's not, you don't have a good enough But angle. it's not deep enough, right. But it's not deep enough to be hitting any of the axle or anything like that. Oh, no way. So then all of a sudden I'm like, oh man. And I, I don't have the thought to like slow down for whatever reason. I don't know why. So I like jerk it a tiny bit just to get back up. Yeah. and lose complete control of the car um it goes like this and i'm going about 80 miles an hour it lo i lose complete control of the car it flips it goes like this flips four times what we could gather probably four or five times yeah across the road in the air hits a, a d massive dirt mound on the other side which happened to be the only like 100 or 200 feet of stretch of dirt like that on this yeah. part of the road because it was a drop off everywhere else to the abyss on the left side too rolls so now we're facing opposite way rolls up into the hill three times back down the hill and then lands no on no way right my eyes were open the whole time and so my brother wakes up the tv goes flying this thing's heavy like yeah, it will like absolutely. take somebody out right the back window blows out and keep in mind my buddy does not have a seatbelt on you know what happens with centripetal force when you don't have your seatbelt on oh, and the car slipping yeah, like that? You get thrown out the window. Flying, man. Um, and then my brother in the front, um, his window gets blown out. I can see dirt fly and rocks flying across. Like I see dirt and rocks flying across because we smacked yeah, into that, that. that dirt, right? Um, and then I, it, so it's just dusty everywhere. And we sit down, like we get back down and I'm like, my, you know what my first thought was? If my laptop's broken, my mom's going to kill me. <laughs> That was my first oh, thought. Way. Yeah, I was like, no, I'm not even no thinking way. about the car. I just totaled the no car, way. and and I and for all I know, <laughs> killed my brother and my best friend. And my first thought was like, dude, if my laptop's broken, my mom's gonna <laughs> kill me. <laughs> no way. Yeah, dude. I'm like, what the freak? No why, why am I thinking that? Way. So then, immediately, then my mind goes to like, McKay and Logan are dead for sure. Like, definitely, they're dead. You don't even. And I look over yeah, and so McKay's yeah. like, Hey, I'm fine. I'm fine. I hear his voice. And then Logan is back. He's like, I'm good too. I'm good too. Hey, don't worry. I'm good. We're fine. Cause they can feel me like the tension rising. Right. And they're trying to calm me down be like, cause I wasn't freaking out yet, but they're like, and so I get out and I'm like, no, like, Oh crap, dude. I like, I feel so embarrassed. I'm like, I fell asleep driving. I'm such an <laughs> idiot. What am I doing? Like, why am I trying to do this? <laughs> and, and then I start to think about it. I'm like, no I'm like, were you guys way. awake for that? And my bro, so McKay and Logan, they're like, yeah, we woke up when you hit the gravel. So like when you started driving on the gravel and oh I was like, goodness. did you guys feel any impact? Like actually feel anything? And we started thinking about it. And my brother was like, no, I dude, I like, I don't, I didn't feel anything. So you're telling me nobody's like, you nobody, not only are they we not just, dead, we literally but just popped out of the like, car. And I was like, Logan, where's my laptop, bro? Get my laptop right now. And he gets my laptop and turns it on. He's like, There's no, no way. And he's like, yeah, no we're way. on the side of the road. Like almost There's no dead. way. He's like, dude, it works. Literally I was like, bro, no thank way. you. My mom's not going to no. kill me. And then we look at the car. We're like, oh, F, dude. <laughs> that was bad. What the freak? We're like, what on earth? What just happened? Because you have, what have we you guys even realized that you should be dead no. yet? What we ex No, but we don't even realize it until later. Watch. What we experienced versus what we felt. So like what we felt what we experienced versus what we saw in the car. We were like, this is not adding up. Like something happened here. Yeah. Right? So 
long story short, we hitchhiked oh, to pr- we hitchhiked at Price. We had some we we thumbed no down way. some of these Australian dudes in a Subaru Outback stopped and picked us up. I'm like, yeah, we'll take you guys all the way to Price. So they take us to Price. <laughs> we're both we're all covered in, sw- in we're covered in. Dirt. Is anybody bloody? No, nobody. Nobody's caught. Nobody's, nobody's bleeding, cut, dude. No one is cut. So we get we 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 walk into this this Motel Six in Price, right? And I'm like, I'm dude. I have a picture of myself in this blue shirt jeans my tennis shoes and i'm baked in dirt just baked no way and i get up and, and it's like 6 a.m at this point or not 6 a.m it's probably 4 or 5 a.m by the time we actually hitched, hitched hike it was about an hour to price from there um it's about 5 a.m and i get to the front desk and i'm like hey we just need like a room to, to stay in for like two hours because we just haven't slept and we've got someone coming to pick us up my uncle came and picked us up and she's like oh, okay it's gonna be like 150 bucks i'm like we just got in a bad car accident and we need a room for two hours. That's it. Yeah. If, like, can we just bottom line, I had lobby, to pay 150 like. bucks. <laughs> <laughs> so st- you for the whole 24. <laughs> so we call our parents, everything's fine. Right. And then like the state trooper has to come talk to us because they have to tow the car. And you still haven't realized what happened. State trooper knocks on the door. We open the door and he's like, he's like, guys, I know this is really hard. I'm so sorry, but um, I, ju- I just need to know how many, how many casualties there are and we're like casualties what do you mean he's like no this isn't a laughing matter like how many people died in this car accident and we're like it was just us three we're fine nobody died and he's like never in my life have i seen something that bad where no one died he's like are you guys okay or what what bones are broken he's like typically we'll see like a broken femur because of how it was crushed in this part and i was like you guys have any broken anything and Logan was like, oh, I got some glass in my hair. I had a little bit of glass hit my head because the roof crunched in on my head. But that's about it. And McKay's like, oh, yeah, I actually have a little scratch on my wrist. <laughs> he had like a tiny scratch on his <laughs> wrist on his no left. Way. Tiny, dude. No blood whatsoever. There's no way. And he's like, if I've ever seen a miracle in all of my time, this would be one. The thing that I keep that I feel like since that that um, experience was I felt very strongly um, because as we were thinking about this, we're like, dude, your mind plays tricks on you. Right. But like I did not feel impact. I did not even a little bit. My back wasn't messed up. But, and I had back problems at the at that point when I was playing football. It didn't hurt my back. My knees were not hurt like because it was crunched in. Right. I'm like, what happened, guys? And they're like, yeah. no, we didn't feel anything either. I was like, Logan, what happened to you? Because he's in the back seat, right? He's like, I and, and keep in mind, no seatbelts. No, no seatbelts. He should, by science, he should have been thrown out of the car yeah. with the way the car was spinning. And so I'm like, Logan, what happened, dude? Tell me yeah. your experience. And he goes, he goes, I heard you hit the gravel, and I sat up, and I had an my instinct was to put my hands like this, and then I felt something pushing down on me. And I was like, it wasn't the TV, right? Like it didn't land on you or anything like that. He's like, no, the TV, I saw it. I could see the TV like kind of floating in the air, not hitting me. It was, And the TV should have hit the yeah. ceiling as well, right? He's like, I could see the TV like kind of floating in the air. And he's like, I, I saw us spinning. I knew we were spinning. I could see the lights as the car was going, but like something was keeping me in that seat. And then I asked my brother the same thing. I was like, Mac, your window got blown out. Like, what did you yeah. feel? He's like, same thing. I felt something like pulling me into the seat no way yeah and um and so my my thought was just like i almost i wonder and i don't know right but like i get this impression a lot that um there were a couple and if not uh my Multiple. brother and my and my uncle because remember they passed away at that time and i was like looking out that window and i just felt this craving like i'd really love to interact with them or something and I've I've got I don't know like I I I don't claim enough to know or claim to know enough to like say whether for sure or not but I've had a really a couple of really strong impressions that um, there were some things I was supposed to do in my life that I made a stupid decision by doing that I could have been easily saved just by not taking that trip and I was stubborn I wanted to make it all the way through I thought I could yeah. do more than I could handle but even so. Um, I had some guardian angels like protecting me because they knew that me and my brother and Logan had some more to do. Wow. So 
it's real man yeah i, I don't know it's a why long story but i don't know why even hearing that story i love it I, i've heard parts of it but truly what i'm amazed at is like how spiritually speaking either we don't talk about it we I, and I don't know why we don't talk about it. I don't know if it, if we're afraid of what people might think, if mm-hmm. we're scared of what ourselves might think, if we're scared of how close it is or, but I do know that if we saw an angel, even right here, this moment, mm-hmm. the first thing we would tell our, tell each other is, did you just see that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah <laughs> the totally. first, so our initial question immediately is basically questioning ourselves. Mm-hmm. Right. And, 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 it's weird to bring us back to magic, but that's why I, I, I'm also interested in magic is to see that our eyes don't, it is to recognize that our eyes don't see everything, mm. that there's another dimension, that there's another feel there. Mm. And even when we see something, seeing is not believing. Right. Seeing, seeing is not believing. Like it's much more powerful to have that spiritual experience mm. of seeing than it is to actually see an angel for real. Yeah. And what? And I, to me, that's amazing, dude. Like wow. that feel is way more powerful than you guys actually seeing that happen. Wow. You know what I mean? Like totally dude. Like yeah. it had to happen in that fashion. Cause it's more, it's more powerful. Jeez, it's more geez. spiritual. And, and hmm. back to scriptures just for a moment for many years in my life, I wondered when, when, when Jesus came and he's talking to the disciples, he, he's resurrected. Right. And doubting Thomas says, I will not believe until I can touch with my own hand, until I could thrust my finger into his side, right? Mm-hmm. He says, I won't even believe it until I could see it. And then he's able to do that, right? But then I've always been interested in what Jesus says after that. He's like, blessed are you because you have seen and saw, but even more blessed are they who who believe on your words. And I always wondered, like, why would somebody be more blessed to, to not actually see it? Huh. And it's things like this that make me realize it's because he left with him the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is a stronger testimony than actually seeing and wow, feeling with your own dude. eyes. So for you, seeing them would have been one thing. Feeling their spirit. Yeah. Feeling the Holy Spirit. Feeling that spiritual protection. Yeah. Is something you could never forget. Wow, dude. And then going, I mean, just tying that back in quickly to like animals. Like what was that guy's original argument? Building the float <laughs> tank was, I think these creatures are progressing quicker because they don't use their sight as the thing it's not the physical world that they're worried about it's like they're communicating in other ways and then also just to tie this back in really quickly is like i've oftentimes felt that like my dogs are are like really in tune spiritually Mm -hmm. and i actually think there's some something really scientific here as well Mm -hmm. which i'm also sure has something to do with this like there's i think it can be explained all this even oh right maybe but like if Zella, Zella is trained, she's the oldest Border Collie Poodle mix we have. She's trained to do things for me when I feel anxiety. Mm-hmm. Nobody can tell when I'm feeling anxious. I can hide oh, it super well. Right. right? No, but- you can't tell with your eyes if I'm feeling anxious. But like I can't hide to Zella if I'm feeling anxious. Why? Because she's not going off of her eyes. Yeah, no kidding. She can hear my heartbeat. Actually, she can smell the adrenaline. She can no feel way. like the those vibes I'm giving off, actually. No. And way. so like I could convince Sarah all day long that I'm fine, but Zella, I can't hide it from her. That's crazy. She's trained to disobey commands if I feel anxiety. So if I say, Zell, stop, go away, she won't do it. Why? Because she's not she, she doesn't care about what's on the surface. Or what you're right? saying. She's trained to know what's like inside. Kind of interesting. Yeah. Dude, that's powerful. I have to say this about dolphins, because Okay. Um me and my wife got kind of into into dolphins a little bit when when uh, my wife was early on in her pregnancy and you know how hard it was for us to have kids yeah early on in her pregnancy with the twins um we were in florida i was out there teaching and one of my clients is like i gotta take you guys to to see some dolphins okay and he's like because dolphins have sonar they'll know that if your wife is pregnant dude he and we did it he was totally right both dolphins totally acted different with her (laughs) A baby, a dolphin and a baby went up to my wife. No. Dude, yeah. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Wow. And ever, ever, from that moment on, we're like, no, dolphins are different. They know. Wow, like, dude. they knew that she was pregnant. And she wasn't even really showing yet, you know, but had twins. My my 
son, Samson, dude. And how he, like, to- the Dolphins totally knew. And we were like, how is that before you guys that? got the news that, the, that she was pregnant? No, we knew. We knew. But as you know, like just because, you know, it doesn't mean anything because then you're like, I got to just wow. make it to the next week to yeah, the next week. Course. Every week is like this jungle right of emotions. <laughs> yeah. But um, that is I think, uh, dude, dude, how fun this these always are for me. <laughs> I know I'm like my, my mind's blown right now. We didn't even like get I'm, the seals. Nah, who cares though? <laughs> <laughs> we don't, dude. My, I I walk away from these feeling like a better person every time, man. That's it's an absolute man. pleasure. Like, thank you, seriously. Same here. Thank you, dude. And uh, be aware of those spiritual experiences Me too. <laughs> you guys are gonna have to share one one of these days. You're gonna have to face yeah. it and stop ignoring it. <laughs> See, <laughs> dude. Well, the thing that I was gonna say before we close up here is like. Yep. I've had some pretty close experiences to that other side, but not 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 the good side. Oh yeah, very very close experiences from really? on like the evil side of that stuff. Yeah, dude. That's not a lot of too. things scare me. That's there too. Yeah, and that's real. If we believe one side, you got to believe the other side as well. Not a lot of things scare me, but I've definitely come face to face with uh, with both. Dang. So like nothing in this world is scary to me, like not even a little bit. The only thing that scares me is, is, um, is not striving to be the best version of me because I know I, I have a good idea of like what might happen if I'm not and things were to end. I'm not uh, those dude. those ones. I don't feel comfortable sharing live, but I'll tell you offline. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Uh-huh. let's do it. I yeah. can't wait to hear. It. <laughs> <laughs> dude. Maybe in the future. All right, guys. Maybe, Thank Maybe you, everybody. Thing.